everybody, I'm Laura Trump coming to you from Studio 45 at Trump Tower in New York City. Just when you thought they couldn't go farther left, the 2020 Democrats are getting more extreme all the time. Joining me is a former Democrat and the founder of the Walk Away campaign, Brandon Strzok. Brandon, Hello. great to have you back. It's great to be back. Thank Since you. you've been here, you spoke at a rally at for the president. And I did. what was the reaction from Trump supporters? It was incredible. It was an amazing rally. There were 18,000 people. There are 10,000 people surplus outside, and it was nothing but love. Uh. I actually got a chance to do some street interviews outside. People were lining up like 30 hours in advance. I know. So I got to go and ask people why they were there, and it was it, it was just a love fest. I love it. Well, yeah. I knew I knew they would uh, support you. Because because you, you've been so great uh, with the president and supporting his policies and him, and we appreciate that. Uh, now, we want to turn, since you are a former Democrat, mm -hmm. to the Democrat debates. Let's take a look at how crazy they are after this latest debate. Watch sure. this. Our Democratic primary debate starts right now. So, President Trump, you've spent the last two and a half years full-time trying to sow hate and division among us. We have a white supremacist in the White House. If you uh, qualify are, for you, are you forgetting what you said two minutes ago? Be are you forgetting already what you said just two minutes ago? So, Brandon, as a former Democrat, give me your reaction. Well, I mean, to me, it's just, just sort of typical to, uh, you know, where these guys are headed. They're totally out of touch with the American people. I think they're not listening to any of us and what we actually want. And they're still not understanding why the American people love Trump. Yeah, now they, they've never gotten it. The media hasn't hasn't figured it out. And it's it's funny because you would think they would have learned a little bit by now, um, especially when it comes to some of the top issues in the campaign. Um, let's talk about this. All of the candidates are running on repealing the tax cuts that this president implemented that are helping so many people across this country. What is your reaction to that? My reaction is that this is a spiteful reaction to a successful president. Yeah. That's th what they really want to do. They would rather the American people suffer than give any credit to Donald Trump, yeah. this administration, or the su successes that they've had. I mean, we've even heard Hollywood celebrities say this all the time, that they'd rather see the country crash and burn under President Trump than to actually admit that he's doing a great job. And some of them are even, Brandon, hoping for a recession, yes. which would be so bad for the country as a whole only because it would reflect poorly in their eyes on this president. I mean, can you imagine being so spiteful? It's, I mean, one of the key tenets, I think, of being a great American is that, you know, sometimes your candidate makes it into the office and sometimes they, right. you, they don't. But we all come together and we accept that the office of president is something that we respect and that for America to succeed, the president needs to succeed. Right. We need to support the president. Yeah, unfortunately, that has not uh, translated over to the Democrats. They haven't gotten so far. the message yet. They haven't. Maybe they will. Coming up, we'll <laughs> see. Um, now, something else that all of these Democrats running for president support are open borders, decriminalization of, of border crossings by illegal aliens. Um, it, it's shocking whenever you contrast that with this president who has said, I want to make sure we have a secure country, a secure border. We want to know who's coming into this country. What's the disconnect here? Why are these people so adamant that they, we should have open borders, decriminalize border crossings? This, this sort of ties into part of the reason why I walked away. There were many reasons why I walked away, but I started to see very clearly that there's something within the whole mentality of liberalism and what Democrats support that they just don't like America as it exists today. They have this utopian vision of what it could be, but it certainly isn't great now, and it certainly never has been great. Right. And I think that they uh, they don't have um, a lot of concern for American people who are suffering, for American people who uh, are struggling, and you know their their own children could be doing better, their own families could be doing better. Right. They only care about other people coming into this country and you know and it's sort of like well if it's at the detriment of american citizens so be it yeah. but let's open the borders and let anybody in yeah versus this president who says let's put america and americans first right let's look at what comes over our southern border human trafficking uh, is obviously a huge problem drugs coming over our borders the illegal aliens that end up in sanctuary cities and oftentimes are out on the streets as criminals some That's of these right. people have committed horrible acts and and injure or kill americans um it, it's crazy that anybody would think that that's okay, but but that's where the Democrats are um, as well. They they've proposed Medicare for all. Mm -hmm. Now, Brandon, this is this is such a hoax that actually I don't think is going to result in quality health care for anyone across this country if the Democrats get their way. You look at places like Canada that has a universal health care system for people. 
Canadians are coming to America as quickly as they can to right. get surgeries, to get medical treatment. Um, what are your thoughts on Medicare for All and what the Democrats propose? Well, I, you know, I saw a tweet from Bernie Sanders within the last couple of days that said the average cost of, uh, of, of a woman going into labor in a hospital is about $32,000. And he said, but the cost of Medicare for All, zero. Oh, so silly you <laughs> if you spend any money on your recent birth because uh, you could have had it all I for free. I must be crazy. I could have gotten it for free. <laughs> yeah. And my response to that was, yes. Yes, it is free if you are giving birth in the nearest manger on a pile of straw, which is probably what we'll be resulting to if the if we go with a Medicare for all system in yeah. the United States. No, it's it's actually a little bit scary to think about. Um, and when they tell you that if you want to keep your your current insurance and and healthcare ha coverage as you have it now, it will be illegal. Right. You cannot do that. That that to me is very scary. Um, but as as you just uh, alluded to, it's probably one of the many reasons that you walked away right. and that so many people, Brandon, are walking away from the Democrat Party um, with with Democrats seemingly taking votes for granted and, and people all across this country's votes for granted. Um, how has the minority support been for the walk away campaign? Do you find that more and more people are walking away? I do. Our, our numbers are definitely going up on all of our social media platforms. And we've had a lot of surging of our testimonials, which is where we started as a testimonial right. campaign, people telling their stories. And we we definitely do direct outreach to minority communities. We're doing events for the black community, for LGBT community, for Hispanic, Jewish, you, you name it. And what we're seeing is that these people who I think in these enormous voting blocks, we're not putting that much thought into why they were voting Democrat. What we hear often and more often than not is that it's almost generational. Right. Well, my parents voted Democrat. My grandparents voted Democrat. I didn't even really realize I had an option. And so I think that these people are already feeling like something's wrong, just as I did. I felt that something was very wrong on the left, but it's like now knowing that there's this movement and this network of support for you to actually act on that feeling you don't have to stay with the Democrats. You don't. If you want to, do it. But you certainly have a choice. And, yeah. I, and I would highly recommend making that choice. And you would recommend coming on over, supporting President Trump. I would. Do you, do you think, Brandon, <laughs> that any other president, any other person in the, the Oval Office could have generated what we've seen happen with this movement that you started, the walk away movement? I tend to think that it, it had to be someone like Donald Trump, bold and, and different and yeah. challenging the ideas of what it is to be president. He doesn't fit into the box that people have made for him. And I think that's very attractive to a lot of people. Absolutely. Do you think anybody else could have done this? No. And none of this would be happening today if it weren't for him. I would still be a liberal if it weren't for Donald Trump. Any other, I mean, even if a different Republican made it into office and beat yeah. Hillary Clinton, I wouldn't have changed because it actually took this president and somebody who was willing to stand up to the the liberal media to stand up to the swamp in DC to make uh, to open my eyes and show so clearly not just to me but I think millions across the country that we're living in a country with a very dishonest media right. that is is lying and manipulating the American people and that's what woke me up and then in that I ended up starting this campaign for people to walk away but none of this he was absolutely the catalyst to this en enormous change yeah. that we're seeing well thank goodness and, yes. and we're so grateful honestly for you I think putting thank yourself you. out there the way you did uh, initially was I'm sure very scary and um, such a, a big you know change in your life yes. and and to put yourself out there like that uh, but look at what you've done and and we're very proud to have your support and and really to have you here today and to get your thoughts on on your former party Thank that you. has strayed so far I think from what so many people uh, see but keep up the great work Thank you and uh, and we look forward to having you back I appreciate it nice I, I appreciate your support so much too oh Thank you, you got it always as the campaign heats up, extremist proposals are what the 2020 Democrats have to offer, causing more and more Democrat voters to walk away and support President Trump. That's the real news for today. I'm Laura Trump from Studio 45 at Trump Tower in New York City. Thanks for joining us, everybody.
big America show, top of Capitol Hill. Gorgeous day, little breeze. Brandon Strzok, right there. This is what we do. This is America. We can kind of play around. Party City. See, check out Party Rentals. Look at these guys are going to make a lot of noise. Hey guys, what's up? TV. Hey, uh, you okay with that? Dad's okay with that? Hey, what, what you doing? Hey, go ahead, do your thing. Blaze Media. Blaze Media on the street. There you go. See you guys. Yeah, go look, look, look. You guys are on TV. Here. See it right there. What's your name? His first name, Jack. What's your name? Brandon. Brandon, Brandon and Jack. All right, that's it. Brandon Strzok, founder of Walkway Movement, coming up right now. Brandon Strzok, you've become the, uh, I think, well, first of all, the founder of uh, hashtag walk away, mm -hmm. which means Democrats, liberals walking away from Democrats. That's it. Yep. But you've also become the kind of go-to voice for the, for the, for the gay movement. Yeah. I guess so. You don't I mean, think so? <laughs> is that, is that, isn't that unfair, an unfair assessment? No, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, there's not a lot of us. So, you know, the, the 12 of us got together and we arm wrestled for it. And I'm now Why is the... that? Why is that? Why? What is it about? I mean, is there some sort of feeling that Trump is homophobic, that conservatives are homophobic or, or unfair? This guy's going the wrong way on one-way street. There you go. Anyway, so, yeah, what is it about conservatives that well, doesn't I... line up with the uh, LGBTQ community? Yeah. Well, first of all, I don't acknowledge the Q. So you don't have to feel the need to say the Q for me. That's interesting. But, yeah. I want to get back to that, but go ahead. Yeah, no problem. Uh, you know, the gay community, I think, is just like just about any other minority group in this country. It's uh, for a long time in enormous voting blocks. They've been voting Democrat, you know, with other groups, say, like racial minorities. It tends to be, I think, more familial when you ask, you know, black, Hispanic people, why are you voting Democrat? They'll often say, well, my parents did. My grandparents did. Obviously, with the LGBT community, it's a little bit different, but it, but, but tell me, is it is there is there policy that affects that your community uh, adversely by by conservatives that they they push versus a Democrat? Is they there, know, yeah, okay. they know, but it's for which is sort of what I was getting to. For us, the the pressure is coming from the media because it's the media that's telling the LGBT community constantly that they're in danger. Donald Trump and his administration and the Republican Party wish to roll their rights back or do all these stuff, and they also misrepresent uh, issues like the what happened with transgender people in the military. They want to say this is a hateful action uh, designed to do harm to transgender people. When in fact I, I, I think of the military and, and, and uh, there could be a case that could be made that, that Donald Trump has turned back some of the, the ground that Barack Obama had made. That's true. Uh, I also think of the, the restroom situation. Tell us about that. Well, yeah. Well, Donald Trump has already made it very clear that anybody's welcome to use any. You know, Caitlyn Jenner can use the women's restroom if, if Caitlyn Jenner wants to. But I, the, the military thing is a little bit more of a unique thing because this is a great example of how the the media manipulates truthful information. Because what what uh, Trump actually did was roll back an executive order that Barack Obama signed in the last six months of his his uh, occupancy of the office and said. Uh, let's just study this, you know, rather than just simply say, you know, people who require ongoing hormone therapy or medical treatment to transition are military ready. Let's study it a little bit and see, because frankly, if somebody was not trying to transition, if it was just a, as they say, cisgendered person who also required the exact same hormone therapy, they would not be a great candidate for the military. You know, we don't let people in with flat feet or bad eyes. So what about taxes? Um, I don't know the answer to this. Federal income tax can two men or two women declare uh, their uh, marriage and somehow get a tax exemption for that. Yeah, I mean, we have civil marriage rights in this country now because the Supreme Court decided in 2015 that marriage equality was the law of the land for uh, for same-sex couples as well as... So there's no tax implication between the conservative platform and, and the no. liberal platform? Okay. No, 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 we're good. Like, the gay community, the LGBT community, we're good, really. And this is why I get so frustrated, I think, with 
the liberal gays who wish to, you know, t to continue this narrative that we're in, our lives are in mortal danger, or that we're in uh, peril due to the Republican Party. What we really should be doing is coming together in a bipartisan way and fighting real legitimate oppression that's happening around the world. I mean, there are gay people, as we speak, who are having bags put over their heads and they're being pushed off of buildings. Uh, in areas of Russia, gay people disappear in the middle of the night and nobody ever hears from them again. But we never talk see, about see, that. And, and we don't. And, and how do you answer uh, you know, I, I hear this all the time. Well, in Iran, you're pointing, you're talking about people, gay people having bags put over the head, pushed over buildings, yet the liberals and, and the left, the American left, politicians and pundits alike will say, we need to be more friendly to Iran. We should be opening yeah. up the dialogue with Iran. Right. With, with these types of human rights atrocities, yet Trump's the bigot. Right. Or he's the, the you know, the, uh, the homophobe. Well, I think th they're... <laughs> They never kind of look outside of what's happening right here in America. So to them, the greatest enemy is straight white Christians. You know, they, they would say that's the greatest threat to humanity is straight white Christians. And uh, when in fact, you know, Christians are not trying to murder gay people, you know, and, and so they're not really looking to see what's going on outside of America. Uh, and you're right. Yes, so this whole white, white privilege issue, can a gay white male have white privilege? Yes. Yeah, and that's sort of where they are right now with the privilege hierarchy is I recently did Thanks guys. <laughs> TV TV, Thanks, you know. Thanks guys. <laughs> Have a good party. Uh, they um recently I did a panel for Vice News uh, which I think doesn't exist anymore, but I did a, a panel for Vice News which was called an LGBT panel. And they wanted to have, you know, representatives from uh, all over the spectrum of the community on there. And I was very quickly aware that there was no purpose for me on that panel. Because as a white gay man, I'm now considered so privileged that I'm not even really a part of this community anymore. It's like if you're not a person of color or identify as gender fluid, non-binary, now now the Q. Now we can talk okay, about the so Q. Okay, so tell me about the Q. Why do you not recognize Q? I don't recognize the Q because it's not a real thing. And the reason why I feel very comfortable saying that it's not a real thing is that even people who identify as the Q cannot answer the question what it means. On this Vice panel, there were people, there were about 12 of us, I'd say at least four of the 12 identified as queer. By the way, a word that I find to be a pejorative and demeaning. And I don't want to be referred to as a queer person. But these people do want to be referred to as queer. and they Can you, claim, can you define it? I, no one can define it. That's your ability. I mean... Well, I asked this question. I actually interrupted the panel and I said, for the people on the panel who identify as queer, can you please define for us what this means? And these four individuals said, well, I'm not quite gay, but I'm not quite straight. So you're bisexual. No, 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 I'm not bisexual. I'm not, it's like, I'm not quite male, but I'm not quite female. I'm not quite. So what are you? I get what you're, you're not this, you're not, but what are you? They can't explain it. Chappelle did. Did he? Yeah, let's take a listen. Great. Chappelle, it's not 106. Chappelle, it's not 106. Come on, Dave. Come on, Dave. Come on. Come on, Garrett. Come on, Jim. I can keep going Come on, if Alicia. you want. Uh, <laughs> okay. So Impeach none of the people could define it. And that's why I refuse to acknowledge it, because it's just another letter that they're adding to this acronym to try to continue this narrative that the LGBTQIA+. Could it just be, be uh, non-gender specific, non-preference uh, for sexuality? That's not a condition. That's not, a, that's not an orientation or, you know... And, I mean, are you sure? I'm positive. Listen, I mean, these are the exact... This is no different than when I was growing up. We had people like uh, Boy George or, you know, there were all those uh, hair yeah, bands. Yeah, yeah. Heterosexual guys who had long hair and wore makeup. And they, you know, and it, gender nonconformity has always existed. But that's not a condition. And that's not an oppressed class of people. If you l enjoy putting on makeup and wearing high heels, great. I, I have no issue with that. If you, That's not a protective class. If you're a man, you want to become a woman, and you're in the military, should the military pay for that surgery? I don't think so. Some would 
some would differ with you. The, I think a lot, the vast majority of the gay community would say you're wrong on that. Well, uh, we could, you know, I'd be or willing trans to talk about it, and I would w be willing to debate it. I mean, I don't, my answer doesn't stem from any, so I love transgender people. I have a lot of transgender friends, and I, in fact, we do these LGBT town halls for the walkway campaign around the country, uh, asking LGBT people to walk away from the Democrat Party. But, uh, and, and one of my panelists is my good friend Blair White, who is a transgender Trump supporter, transgender Republican. Um, so my answer really just stems from the fact that, you know, I think what's right and what's fair for the military. And I think that that would be a special exemption that we wouldn't give to any other class of person. Before I move on to Greta, I want to do this. I want to do this. Guys, take this. Take this. Can you take this camera? Take this camera. Okay. Got it. Okay. Hang on. Stay right there, bro. I'm not going anywhere. Watch what I'm going to do here. This is what I want to do. I want to roll the Chappelle sign. <laughs> but I can't get my crew to figure out how to roll a Chappelle sod. So I'm going to walk over here to the control room. Hey, control room, can we roll the Dave Chappelle sod? The rule is that no matter what you do in your artistic expression, you are never, ever allowed to upset the alphabet people. All those letters are their own movement. They just travel in the same car together. If it's one thing that the L's and the G's agree on, is that the B's are f gross. <laughs> they seem greedy to the L's and the G's, you know what I mean? They're just sitting in the back seat like, yeah, man, I'll f anybody in this car. What's going on, man? And sitting next to the B's, all the way in the back seat by themselves, looking out the window. That's the T's. Everybody in the car respects the T's, but everyone also resents the T's. It's not the T's fault, but everyone in the car just feels like the T's are making the trip take longer. <laughs> and just when that car can't get any more tense, the Q's are hitchhiking that they pick up on the road. Some white dude in booty shorts is walking down the freeway. so good that's so good <laughs> you see the uh, the metaphor of the trip taking longer to acceptance i assume that's what he's talking that's about. what he's talking about but i would actually uh, I, I love that segment i've never seen it before but i would actually disagree i think at this point it is the t's and the q's that are driving the car Ooh, the rest of us in the back and they're driving the car for because all of us the, they because there's, they're, they're newer onto the scene of acceptance so to speak well i i think that they just completely control the they have the megaphone and the voice for this community right now just like i said when i did that panel they they didn't want to talk to me. They didn't care about what I had to say because I'm a white gay man. All they want to talk about right now are the people who are gender non-conforming and identify as uh, neither gender, both genders, gender queer, gender fluid, all of these Q conditions that none of us understand and didn't exist, by the way, until we basically got to the point where gay people had norm you know, normalcy and equality under the law. They have to create these new conditions to continue what I call the oppression industry, which are these groups that make money and people keep careers by It's, it's the people. old O'Reilly uh, comment about Al Sharpton and, and, Al Sharpton. and uh, the, the uh, race hustlers, you would call them. A race yeah. hustler, yeah. Al Sharpton is a great benefactor of the oppression industry. Yes. The oppression industry, yeah. Um, uh, there may be an impeachment hearing going on or comments from Nancy Pelosi later today. We're taping this around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That may happen after, before we air. Just wanted to throw it out there. Brendan, I don't need you to weigh in on that. What I really want Brendan to weigh in on is, is Greta Thunberg. This is a 16-year-old girl. She's Swedish. Who is very, very animated about climate change. Let's take a listen to Greta if we, don't, if we can do it. I don't know if I animated People it's are right suffering. Word. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? That's being called now the how dare you coming mm. from, from the UN. Can yeah. I just tell you very quickly, Trump tweeted this. This is why you got to love Trump. She seems like a very happy young girl <laughs> looking forward to a bright and wonderful future. So nice to see. <laughs> um, Greta Thunberg. So look, she made a formal complaint to the UN. 
she complained about five countries that are not that are, are offenders of the climate change era. United States is one of them. China was not one of them. They're the biggest polluter on the planet. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on Greta and the activist movement? Uh, well, I, to me, it's just the left kind of doing what the left does, which is this. It's just another form of identity politics using children, uh, because that's the whole point of identity politics. If you take uh, a person of color, or if you take a gay person, or even better, put them together, if you take a gay black person and you prop them up, they're kind of above reproach in a way. You know, you're, you're not supposed to criticize black people. You're not supposed to criticize gay people. And you're certainly not supposed to criticize children. And that's why they use these, these kids. And I think that's why everybody is... Yes, I mean, the, the speech was absurd. And it would, it would have been a great scene from, like, Game of Thrones or something like that. But I think for this purpose, the reason why people are making fun of her is not just because her performance was so over the top... But because we know, we get what's going on here. We know what they're doing. You're using kids so that we're supposed to feel like monsters or we're, appear as monsters if we criticize well, the content of what the kids are saying. Right, right, right. If, if, you, if, you, if I, too. when I criticized Obama, I was a racist. If I criticize Hillary, I'm, I'm a, you know, an, an anti-feminist or misogynist. Right. Uh, you can't criticize her, but some of the facts are just completely just bold-faced lies. Right. I mean, I tweeted something like, she left off China. Is she really... Uh, that is she that ill-informed or just a big pulling a big sham on on, on the world i mean well I, who knows i mean i would be interested in knowing who i mean that to me did not feel like a speech that she probably wrote herself so i'd be very interested in knowing where this content is coming from i don't want to say for sure i mean maybe this is girls obsessed with climate research i saw something on actually okay i'll be honest with you alex jones sent it to me okay and he's claiming that both of her parents are antifa members yes. um i will tell you here's how it works here's the climate change hoax ready and it is a hoax the the, the, the planet will be here for 100 million years from now it's been around 100 million 200 300 million years it'll still be here we're not ruining the planet or there's no extinct uh event that's starting right now when AOC How said dare you. when AOC said twelve years, it's the beginning of an instinct uh, event, extinction event. There's twelve years down the road, and then we called her on it. She she said she was just kidding. Here's the deal: there are literally hundreds of billions, if not maybe close to a trillion dollars that are out there every single year that are earmarked for climate change initiatives. Whether it's solar, whether it's uh, non-renewable -re uh, fuels, uh, other other forms, whether it's studying crap in a laboratory in England, that's money, that's real money that these yeah. professors need to get their hands on to continue their work so they can go and sleep with students and do whatever the hell they do and the rest of the time of the year, throw up a study here and there and get paid for it. There is a big sum of money that's dependent on the climate change fear. It's a fear-mongering, right. just like Al Sharpton with race, just like certain people with, with uh, gender... It's all a big scam. Gender, uh, gender I don't know, pain and, and... Right, oppression and, and victimhood. Oppression, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, I think uh, when they continue to do these things and they become more and more desperate and more sort of unhinged in these... Uh, these spectacles, which is exactly what that was with that, that young girl. It was a spectacle. And I think that it becomes more... I'll be honest with you. You know, just, what, two, three years ago, I'm losing track, uh, I was a Democrat, and I was a liberal, and I was a person... I probably would have seen that and felt like her performance was ridiculous, but I probably would have felt a little bit moved by the passion with which she said what she said. And so, in many ways, I'm still learning and unlearning a lot of these things. And I look around and I say, well, you know, I think there's evidence that the climate is changing. And so the question is, is it man-made? Is it not man-made? But then I see something like that and I'm like, oh my God. Okay. Yeah. They're doing it again. Like this, like it's such an obvious example of how it's such a scam because that is not a legitimate plea for something that's truly happening for people to open their eyes and pay attention. So here's that's theater. Here's another, um, let's call it shining a little light on the, on the, on the climate change hoax. Um, so the climate was warming and the, the Al Gore said that New York was going to be underwater by 2015. And you know, there was big, it was, it was global warming. Global mm -hmm. warming was the, was the, the, the fear and panic that they were selling. Right. Until there was a decade of cooling. We had a situation, we had more than a decade where there were magazines, Newsweek, Time calling for a, an, an imminent ice age that was coming. Yeah. So then they realized that what, ha what they had to do is they couldn't say global warming because it was cooling. So it started to cool and they called it climate change. Now, 
it's heating up again, and yeah. they want to go back to climate change equals global right. global warming. It's yeah. not. It's the Earth that undulates over you know t- decades, warmer, cooler, warmer, cooler. It's nothing different than before. The, the extremes aren't any more extreme than they were before. So th- that's where the money is coming. That's where the where the fear is coming from. Megan Rapinoe um, named the FIFA Women's World Player of the Year. Great, great soccer player. Great soccer player, but here it is. You know, she 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 protested against the national anthem, against the American flag, and against Trump. Yeah, she gets on my nerves a lot. Why? Um, what's your question? <laughs> she, well, you know, it's just FIFA, so they can they can call whoever they want the player of the year. But right. I, I mean, what was that 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 other girl who scored some of the final? Goal? I think they had about one goal difference. That real pro. Um, Anyway, the striker in the middle, can't remember her name. Right. I would have put her as the world player of the year. Right. So I guess the, the question is, is it is it politicization that's put her in this position? And I would say probably, obviously, yes. Now, I have to be honest with you. I am not a sports guy. Never was. I don't follow any sports whatsoever. But I can appreciate the fact that it seems like the entire sports industry is becoming very liberal and taken over by liberal indoctrination. And I feel sort of sorry for American sports fans because it's kind of seeped its way into everything and I think ruined everything. I mean, I know everything. diehard football fans who don't want to watch football anymore. It, it, it's politically correct across the board. Even now it's into football. Antonio Brown, before there's any investigation, I'm not defending the guy. Listen, I saw some of the tweets he sent, but the Patriots, he was released by the Oakland Raiders. Patriots picked him up knowing everything that was going on. Maybe he emailed a, a, an ex or at one point, and they cut him after one week because of the, I guess, the Twitter outrage. I mean, we're just, we were becoming a, a nation of snowflakes. Well, that's my question is, I mean, especially when it comes to the, the sports entertainment industry, how is that happening there? I mean, why... Are not the majority of sports fans conservatives? <laughs> like, I don't understand. I don't know what's going on, dude. I don't. Where's know. the revolts? I don't and know. where, where? I, I, it may be, it may be down the middle. It may be, you know, both they come from both sides. But of who the political likes spectrum. it? Who I don't know. It? That's that's a better point. I don't want to hear the kneeling. Who who likes the all all, all the, the 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 politics mixed in with? Years sports. ago, there was a gunshot. There was a gun. Um, There's a murder. A football player. W- Got drunk one night, murdered his girlfriend, pro football player. And Bob Costas spent a half an hour on, um, I believe it was ESPN, maybe it was NBC, talking about gun control at halftime. I was just like, can we just can we just watch football? It's insane. Can we just watch soccer? You're right. We have to have all the satellite bullshit yeah. stuff going on. I, uh, I just, I can't imagine, I mean... You know, people get all up in arms about artists and and people in Hollywood being political, and, and to a certain degree, I mean, it's it's so stacked on one side. So I certainly get the argument, but I would say, I would at least argue that artists are in a profession in which they are expressing something, and they're an exp- they're expressing uh, a statement about culture. And politics and culture are often very mixed together. But sports has pol- politics and sports have no business mixing together i believe it, i agree with you brandon before we go tell us about walk away what, what's the status of and uh, what's next uh walk away is doing awesome so uh we have spent a lot of this year so far traveling the country doing kind of boots on the ground activism as i talked about earlier doing our town halls which were gearing towards minority classes and issue based so we've been doing uh black americans town halls lgbt town halls uh we have our first Four cues Wait, what? where's the q town hall <laughs> they're, just, they get no town the cues halls. are welcome to come uh, <laughs> they're, but they're not getting their own town hall um and we're doing our very first walkway hispanic town hall uh either october or november that's gonna be in aoc's district uh new york city that'll be our first one our first jewish town hall uh we're going to berkeley in november to do uh uh talk to the kids on the berkeley college campus and do our first capitalism versus socialism town hall we do have a college campus tour coming up and we're shooting our educational video series the hard truth we have the first three episodes out we're shooting five more episodes i'm getting on a plane tonight to los angeles to shoot five more episodes so we're doing a lot of you're stuff busy. you're busy where can people find your uh all this stuff. Yes. So people should go to walkawaycampaign.com, click join the movement, which will connect you with our social. There it is. And see that button that says donate? 
Use it. Use that donate we are, button. We are a grassroots organization. We're trying to save America, and we're doing a really good job. We could use your help. Please donate to our grassroots campaign. It'll be the best money you ever spent. Uh, and check out those testimonials, too. If you click the testimonial button, people say that walking, watching walkaway testimonials is their favorite part of their day because it gives them hope that America you, is not you lost. You must scare the bejesus out of Democrats. I try. Right. And I'm not going to stop trying. And it's struck. Thank you very Great much. Great to see you, Eric. Always good to see you. Thank you. Hey, guys, thanks for all the noise in the background. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's great. Thanks. It's great. <laughs> I appreciate it. America. <laughs>